So folks, we're just getting started here. Um, we're official, we'll, we will officially start in another 10 minutes or so. Folks, we're just getting started here. We're looking to get started right around three o'clock. If you haven't already printed the score sheet, this would be a great time to go do it. The link to do that is in the description of this live video, where you can go to our Troops Scouting Realms page and print off the scorecard. Should this be one page? Looks like the one here I have on camera that you can see. We'll get started here in a few minutes. I hope everyone's been enjoying the backyard camp out activities today. The rocket launch video was pretty cool. Okay, folks, we'll be getting started here in a few minutes. Again, all you need to play with us today is this printed score sheet. We'll all be following along with the dice that I'll roll. Um, there was a video that explained the basic rules, but I'll go over the basics uh, quickly as well, um, as, right before we get started. And don't worry if you get lost as we go along, there's, there'll always be a chance to watch the video over and to play along. You don't 
Um, you just need the dice roll, kind of the randomized dice roll to play. Um, and you'll be good to go. All right, Scout Troop 25 from Waynesboro is joining us. Georgia Carolina Council going to attempt to play. That's fantastic. Make sure you bookmark that link in the top because you can always go back and we'll, we'll post the video here as well, as well as the score sheet and other instructional videos. So um, every time you play it, you'll get a little better at it, I promise. And it'll become easier as the mechanics uh, start to make more sense. Uh, take this back and play with your troop um, in some virtual meetings that you're doing, or even once we're able to all meet in person again, you still can play this uh, in campouts and such. I'm thinking of finding some lamination sheets and laminating a few scorecards to take camping. So then we can just use a dry erase marker and keep reusing the scorecard over and over. So that's a plan for another day. So, all right. We're getting close to the start time. So just wanna make sure folks have, um, they printed off the score sheet. Hopefully you had a chance to either play along with us this morning or uh, watch the little in introduction video that covers the basics, but I'll go over those now. Um, the first thing I wanna do is, uh, as always, thank the fine folks at Stonemeyer Games for creating a really cool game that they called Rolling Realms based on all the board games that they make. And they invented this game specifically for folks to be able to play remotely like we are today where we can't get together in person. Uh, and with permission, Stonemeyer Games allowed us to modify the score sheet to put names on it that our scouts would recognize um, and be maybe a little more fun for the scouts that weren't familiar with their games. So thank you very much Stonemeyer for doing that. We super appreciate it. And our troop has already enjoyed playing this several times. Um, and the scouts are getting quite good at it. So it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. So with that, I'm going to start uh, explaining the game. So Scouting Realms is a game that's based over three rounds. There are nine turns per round. And each turn is comprised by rolling the dice and then scoring a corresponding action on the, on the, thing, on the uh, scorecard. Now, for each round, we're only going to be playing with three realms at a time. We're going to start with Woodruff and play the three realms in the Woodruff area. Then we'll move to Burt Adams and play the three realms there. And then we'll move to Altoona. Now, when you take this game back to your troop and your unit and you play that, you can play with any three realms at a time. Um, so you could play the first column, then the second column, and then the third column. Totally up to you. But for today, uh, we're going to all play along. Um, using the Woodruff, then Bird Adams, then Altoona. So the point of the game is to earn as many stars as you can. Along the way, as you complete certain tasks and actions, you will earn resources such as pumpkins, hearts, or coins. When you earn one of those resources by completing a task, you will mark it on your score sheet by circling it. Circling it means you've earned a resource. When you draw a line through it later, when you use one of the modifiers, as you start to get more sophisticated, um, you will spend a resource and you will mark it off as being spent. This is important because each unused resource each round is worth 0.1 star. So you might actually have, you know, a whole star or some fraction thereof for your scoring. Now I'm going to explain how to score the items in the first set of realms that we're playing and then we'll play and then before each round starts, I will explain the realms in those various rounds. So what we do here, the Davis Inn is a little bit like Tetris. So as you roll the dice, you get to use one dice in each of these realms or at a time. So on any given time, you're only gonna be playing in two of the realms. 
you can take and you can see that each dice has a corresponding shape to it. So if I were to roll a three, then I could, you're allowed to rotate these pieces. I could rotate this and fit it in here and I would fill in one of the, the, the big squares. Now, when you complete a big square, you get the resources underneath it. So there's a coin underneath there that I would earn. When you complete an entire big row, which is two rows of the little squares or a big column, you will earn a star. I mean, that's the whole point of the game is to earn those stars. With Carlock Pavilion, this, this realm plays a little bit like Sudoku or the um, uh, Minesweeper game of old. So if I were to put a one here in the center square, I can't put the same number on left or right or up and down from it. I can only put, if I want to put the same number in, in Carlock again, a second or third time, it has to be diagonal. Now, the way that you earn stars in Carlock is based on how well you do in the other two realms. So if I earn four stars over in Mountaineering and only one star in Davis, then the maximum that I can earn in Carlock is one star. Now, you also have to, in addition to that, you have to have, you can only earn, one is the maximum, but you can also only earn stars based on the number of numbers you've put into Carlock. So if you could earn three stars based on the lower score and you'd only put one number in Carlock, you would only earn one star for Carlock. All right, <clears throat> now we're gonna do mountaineering. So for mountaineering, there are two areas. There's a coin area and a pumpkin area. And each one of them is, is scored and counted um, separately. So now this, this realm allows you to use uh, one dice, or if you happen to roll doubles, like snake eyes or double twos or double threes, then you can score one dice in each area. Now how it works, it's a cumulative total. So if the first turn you roll a one and you mark off the one and you can't use it again, then your cumulative score in the coin area is one. One to three earns you the resource for that area. So if you're on this side, you'd earn a coin. If you're on this side, you'd earn a pumpkin. Once your cumulative score is worth between four and eight, then you earn a star. As we get into it, you may realize that if by adding one of the, the larger numbers on the bottom might be great for a high score, but it might push you out of the possibility to get a star. So this one requires a little bit of thinking to figure out how you're gonna best place this. So one suggestion I have if you're a brand new player is you can follow along and do exactly my moves. So you kind of learn the mechanics of the game, uh, but feel free to play the numbers however you want to. That's the point of this is that everybody will play and score their sheet separately. So we're going to start we're going to start with round one here, and I'm going to do the, uh, the, the first roll. And so I've got a four and a three. Now, the first thing we do as soon as the dice are roll is we record what that dice roll was down here. It helps us so that, um, one, we know how many turns we've taken per round and where we are. And if we need to go back and, you know, trust me, as we get three or four rolls into it, you'll forget what the last roll was. This is a very helpful way to just to kind of keep track of that. So I wrote my four and my three down, and now I can look at how I'm going to do this. So I'm going to use the three over here in the Davis Inn. This is a great little shape, and you can rotate the shapes all you want. And there's no limit. If I roll a three every time, I can put the three shape in here every single time. So I'm going to fill that in. I'm going to use a highlighter so it's a little easier to see what I've filled in. That gray corner one was already a freebie. So I filled that up and underneath there was a coin. So down here on my score sheet, I will circle the coin. So now that I have a coin that I can use, and this is gonna be very handy um, come later and I'll explain the modifiers as we get to them. All right, so I used my three. I need to place a four. I'm gonna place a four right here in the center of Carlock. I didn't want to start out. I probably could have started out with a star and then hoped over here in Mountaineering and then hoped to get a one or a two later, but maybe that would have been better, but oh well, next game. So we'll just go with it for now. All right, I'm gonna do the second roll. Got a six and a five. I'm gonna write 
the six and the five down in the score sheet. Now I'm going to take a look here. So the six in Davis is a big piece to try and fit in there. Um, the five would actually fill up a nice big chunk in the Davis end. I'm going to try that. I'm going to try using that. That's three down and three across. So that would actually go there and there. Uh, I didn't quite fill in any big squares yet, but it pushed me both. I'm a lot closer to getting um, a star by filling that row and a star by filling the down. So that was the five. And now for the six, I'm gonna go ahead and place the six over here in Carlock. I'm gonna put it underneath because I really wanna get those two coins. And the reason I want the two coins is because one of the easiest modifiers to use, and they can be super beneficial, especially when you're trying to fill up spaces in the Davis end, is this bottom one where it says pay X coins to gain a die value of X. So if I were to spend this one coin right now, it'd be like there was a third die in the bucket that had a value of one. And I could use it in a realm that I didn't already play a dice in. So you still, you can't break the rule of playing more than one dice in a realm, but since you only roll two dice and there's three realms, chances you should have at least one realm that you haven't played anything in. So I need those extra coins or I want those extra coins so I can start filling in at a minimum those little one grids over in Davis. All right, so that was my six and my five. All right, now I'm gonna roll in double sixes. Oof. So let me write that number down. Now I could play double sixes here, but that would only give me, I'd have to be really lucky in mountaineering to be able to get extra stars, but immediately that's two stars. Well, that's a tough call. Conferring with the, the my judges in the room, would you play double sixes and get two stars? I would. I'm going to risk it. Since I can play both sixes right now, I'm going to mark both sixes off in mountaineering. Now, how I'm getting two stars is it's the end of the turn where I marked in that area. The value, cumulative value of what I've marked off in the coin area is a six, which is right there. So that gives me one star. And then I score the pumpkin areas the same way, works exactly the same way, two stars. I don't know if this is gonna work out, but I'm gonna give it my best shot. All right, so I use both sixes in that one area this time. All right, we're gonna try our fourth roll. One and a three. I'm gonna write down the one and the three. Now, I'm gonna use the one over here in mountaineering. Now that cumulative total is seven. I'm still within the bucket here that's gonna let me Get that star. Uh, and now the three. I'm going to spend the three over here in Davis and I'm going to go around this corner on the bottom. Doing that, that one there did fill up a big square for me and then there was a heart underneath there. So I'm going to go and mark that I earned a heart for Davis in. Okay, and I marked off, I marked off the dice roll down here on the bottom. And I think that's good. I gotta, I gotta fill this out. I gotta get those coins and I gotta start putting up some stars over here in Davis or I'm gonna come up with a really low score this round. All right, here we go. Three and a six. Three and a six. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop the six over here, which lets me fill up, uh, or I earn two coins. And then the three, I'm gonna take the other three in Davis and go right there. I'm gonna fill up going further. So now I'm getting really close over here 
to being able to fill up two rows. And there was a heart that I filled up. So I wanna make sure I record the heart that I earned there. Okay, it's coming along. Might end up with more than just three stars on this round. All right, so now we're going, here we go, roll six, turn six of round one, one and a five. Move that so you can see it a little better, or sorry, one and a four, one and a four. I'm going to use the one over in Mountaineering on the pumpkin, because that gives me a total of seven under the pumpkins and lets me count the star. Now, I have maxed out. There's nothing else I can roll in Mountaineering that'll give me any more stars. I might be able to, no, I'd be able to earn hearts, but I've maxed out there, but that's okay. Four stars isn't bad. So that was the one, and now I need to use the four. Let's see, will the four be of any use over here? I could fit it in at Davis End, but it feels a little bit like forcing it. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna drop the four over here in Carlock. Hope it works out. I'm running out of turns. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and spend, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to wait one more roll. I'm going to wait one more roll. I'm hoping for a two here. Need a two. Did not get a two. That is most unfortunate. So I'm going to post a, write down the roll, three and a four. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is mark a four there at Carlock, which lets me earn a pumpkin and a coin, which I'm gonna mark immediately. I'll put the three over here in Mountaineering under the coin section, which pushes me well into the nines. So that's a heart. But now I've got four coins. I am going to spend two of these which is my pay X for a dice value of X. So I'm paying two coins. So it's like there's a third dice in here that has a value of two. And I'm going to immediately use that in Davis N right there and fill up a square, which completes a row. Not only does it give me a pumpkin, but I get one star out of that. And it's kind of worth two stars because now that I have one star here, at the end of the game, I can mark off that I earned at least one star in Carlock. So had to do that. All right, here we go. Eighth roll, round one, three and a five. All right, so the three do me any good. You know what, I'm going to mark, I'm gonna try for this. I'm gonna mark this off here in the three. That covers up and gives me a coin. Uh, the five, the five I'm just gonna place over here um, in Carlock, just need a place to put it. I'm gonna spend two more of my coins Oh, I can't, I can't spend it yet because I marked it in, hang on. Wait on that one, I can't, I couldn't spend those because I was gonna buy another dice for the two, but since I've already put uh, a mark in there, um, I can't put any more. So that's not gonna work out like I'd intended. Bummer, oh well. All right, here we go. Last, last die roll. All right, a four and a five. So I will, I'm gonna put the five. Yeah, I'm gonna put the five here. Gives me a heart and a coin. The four I'll mark over here in Mountaineering, which gives me another heart. And now I'm gonna spend those two coins over here in Davis which will fill up that big row, big column. 
So not only do I earn a pumpkin, but I get to complete that. And I didn't write down the dice roll, which was a four and a five. All right, so now I can score Carlock. So I got four, in, four stars in Mountaineering, two stars in Davis. So the maximum I can earn in Carlock is two. I have more than at least two numbers here. So I get to score two stars in Carlock. And now I add them all up. So that's four, eight stars, plus one-tenth for every unused resources. So I spent those four coins, so I can't count those. But one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So that's it's a 1.1. So it takes my eight to a 9.1. Go ahead and post your score for round one in the chat if you'd like. We'd love to see how well you're doing. Um, hopefully all of y'all are doing better than I am this round. Um, there's still two more rounds to go, so time to catch up. I'm going to pause here for a moment while folks tally up their scores and put it in the chat so we can all see. Don't be bashful. Show us the score. Let us, let us see what you did. Well, that's okay. We will go ahead and I'll start explaining how the Burt Adams realms work and we'll play that round. So the three realms that we have in Burt Adams are the Love Dining Hall, Camp Jamerson, and of course, Fort Brumley. So how it works is, so in Love Dining Hall, you can use one dice to, or two in the same column to get both bonuses. So Let's just say you rolled this four and five here. Um, with nothing marked off here, I can't do anything because you have to mark off one of the top row items before you can mark off the bottom row. So if I were to roll a three and a four, then I could, on this turn, I could mark off the three here, either in the heart or the pumpkin, record that resource, and then in a subsequent turn, hope for a five or uh, a six, whichever one I marked, to earn that star. For Jamerson, it's just one dice at a time. Um, and you're trying to put in dice value that will equal the number that's shown here for each bird. So seven, 12, or 16. And if you can do that, put like a three, a two, and a three, or if you can add better than I can, a three, a one, and a three, then you'll get a seven. And then once you complete a whole bird, you um, mark off the, the stars. Now for the first two squares that you're putting in, there's resources to earn. Um, and if you can't fill on that third square, it's better just not to play it because you're not going to get anything for it uh, extra. You don't have to do the birds in order. You can start with the 16 if you want, but you do have to go to from left to right inside of each bird. Now for Fort Brumley, um, there are two castles here. Uh, here on the left, and the one on the right. And each castle has three rows. One, two, three, four, five, six. You earn a star by completing each, each row. Now the bottom row of each tassel, castle has a free square filled in for you. So you only need one number over here. The trick is that as you, you have to build from the bottom to the top, you can't put larger numbers on top of smaller numbers or the same. So if I put a three here, then I have to put a two and then I have to put a one. Because if I put a three and a one, I can't put anything over here and I'll never finish that, that, that row or that column rather. Um, now you earn a star when you complete the row. When you complete the column, you earn the bonus. All right, so pretty straightforward. And this time, remember that as you're recording resources, they have to go down here in the round two area. And anything that you didn't use up here is just lost. You don't, none of these resources that you didn't use from round to round carry over to the next one. So it's just only mark and use things out of round two. So with that, we're going to, uh, to get started. Oh, some good scores over there. We had a 13, 
uh, and a 10 coming in, 11. Great. So I'm glad you guys, all of y'all did better than I did, <clears throat> which lately doesn't seem to be too hard. I don't seem to be a very good scouting realms player. Uh, the scouts on my troop do much better than I did. All right, here we go. First roll of round two. All right, we got a three and a six. So I'm going to write that score down. Three and a six. And I'm going to take a whole star here in Love Dining Hall. I'm going to mark off the three, earn the pumpkin. I can, I can use both dice in the same time if they're in the same column. So this one, I'm doing the three and the six right away. Star on the first roll and marking off the pumpkin. Again, you could have uh, marked off the three here and then put the six over in one of the other uh, squares if you wanted. And I did forget to say when I was introducing Fort Brumley that I could have put the three and the six over here. I could have started with a six and a three. Um, you, you can use both dice, but it's only one per castle. You can't put them both in the same castle on the same roll. Okay, here we go. Roll number two. All right, I'll, I'll try my best to slow down here a little bit. So a four and a six. So I'm going to write down the four and the six. Take a look at my sheet and see what I want to do here. I'm going to go in Fort Brumley with both dice this time. I'm going to put the six over here. It's a great number for a bottom row. And then I'm going to put the, the four in that spot. That did complete one row in the, ca the castle on the right for Fort Brumley. So I'm going to fill in that star. So and the reason I was, again, I was able to use it is because it said, it specifically gave me an exception in the instructions that I could use two dice, one per castle for Fort Brumley. All right. Now we'll do roll three. Oh, four and a six again. All right. Um, let's see. All right, I seem to be rolling a six a lot today. I'm gonna to take a risk. I'm gonna put a six in Camp Jamerson under the 12 bird. And then I need to um, mark off the, the coin that it gave me. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and spend the other four over here. and take the pumpkin that it gives me. And that four completed a whole row in Brumley. So I'm gonna mark off that star. And I'm gonna get a little ahead of myself here. I'm going to spend the one coin that I just earned for a die of one, and I'm gonna mark off the one over in the Love Dining Hall underneath the coin mark another coin. I'm trying to set myself up so that if I roll a four in a later round here, I can get a star. Um, and I went with the coin versus the heart because right now the coins allow me to buy the dice. Um, and that's more valuable to me right now. All right, so now we're gonna do roll number four. Double fives. We'll write down the die roll. And the die roll double five, let's see. <clears throat> I can't, if I, I can't place it over here in the love dining hall because I don't have anything above a five marked. So that's a bummer. Um, actually, I can spend this one coin That gives me a die of a one and I can mark that and then use the five 
which gives me a star. And I can take the other five. Hmm. It's risky. If I put the five here, I have to hope that another one pops up. It's not terrible. And give me two stars. I'm going to take the risk. I'm going to try it. I'm going to put the five in here. I've got a running total of 11. I need a one to pop up for that, that gambit to work out. So here we go. Roll number four. Double sixes. Oof. Man. High numbers today. Well, I'm going to put the six over here in the 16. And I'll put a six here. I can't stack sixes. That was totally not useful for me. <laughs> oh, well, sometimes the dice just roll that way. How about that? And I couldn't use the other six over. Well, oh, I could have put the second six there. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to mark that off with the 16. I'm going to move my six over here. I'm using both in Fort Brumley. I think that makes the most sense. At least I'm hoping so. All right. I really need to roll a one here. That is not a one. Five and a three. Okay, but I can put the three here and the five here, both of them in Brumley, because the three stacks on top of the four, the five stops on six, that completed two rows. So first, actually, I earned this heart. I'm going to go ahead and record that before I forget. And then I'm going to mark off two more stars in Brumley. Yep, two stars in Brumley. But I am running out. I got three more turns. And I don't have any stars in Jamerson yet. I gotta I need a two to pop up here or a one to pop up. Oof. Well, that's a big old bummer. Three and a six. Three and a six. Write down what the score was. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the three over here on the top of Brumley. It gives me a coin and a heart. I'm going to immediately spend that one coin for a one die. Gives me the 12 and Jameson. Let's me mark off two stars there. Um, I need to plant the six somewhere. I don't have any other place I can put it. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put it back here. Yeah, I'll just put it back here in Camp Jamerson. I'm not gonna get any use out of um oh, wait a minute. It was a three and a six. So yeah, I spent the three. That was the six. Yep. Okay. The numbers are all running together. That's why it's important to write them down because even I, I start losing track of where we are. Here we go. Roll eight in round two. <laughs> Double sixes. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. All right. So I'll put a six there, which gives me a pumpkin. And I can't, uh, you know what? I'm going to put a six over here. I know it won't fill up. It gives me another, at least, um, no, I can't do that. I can't use two dice in one thing. Ah, oh, bummer. Ah, definitely. Need, I need like double twos. I didn't write down my, I didn't write down the double sixes. I need double twos to come up. Double twos. <laughs> six and a four. Well, well, 
I can I can do this. I can put the four there, which gives me one more star, and it gives me a coin. Only one coin, and the four. Oh, and the four goes there. No wait, I already used the four. Dab nab it. I just don't get anything else for that. Well, shucks. All right, well, it's not going to take me too long to add up this small number of stars. So I got five, nine stars plus one, two, three, four, five, six, nine point six. So I did better than my first round, but not a great score. So let's see your scores, uh, see how you guys are doing. Hopefully you made smarter decisions with those rolls. It was a whole lot of sixes um, that go around. So I'm going to pause here and uh, give everybody a chance to tally up their scores. Okay, so hopefully we'll see some scores coming across here in the next bit, but I'll start explaining how the next three realms, realms work. This has a, a couple of the more complicated realms in it. So it's good it's down here at the bottom. So for sailing, sailing is probably the hardest one to, to grasp as you're going through. So let's say you roll a six and a four like this, then you could mark off the six and you would hand write the four into this open crate. Now, you're not using the four, you're just writing what the unused dice was. You still have the other four to use over in kayaking or canoeing. So you write it down here. And the reason you do that is in a later turn, if you can get a couple of these crates that all have the same number of the unused dice, then later when you roll a four that you want to use, you can mark off all the crates that have that number and you might get two or three or four stars with one dice roll later in the round. So it's a bit of a gamble um, to try and guess which number you think might come up again uh, to write down there. Last round, I would have written, we should have written sixes all the way across the bottom <laughs> to get those. But um, anyway, all right, so for kayaking, it's very straightforward. You've got six spaces around the pumpkin and the heart, and you can only use each space once. And so if you mark off the one, you get a pumpkin, but you mark it off and you can't play the one again, and you just accumulate pumpkins and hearts throughout the game. Now, at the end of the round, you count all of the pumpkins earned, even if you spent them. And if the total number of pumpkins is three or more, you get one star. If it's six or more, two stars, nine or more, three stars. And then you do the same counting for the hearts. Now there are 10 available hearts and 10 available pumpkins in these three rounds. You've got six, two more here, two more here. And the same for the pumpkins. But you won't mark any stars throughout the round. It'll be at the very end when we add up the score. So for canoeing, it's a two-step process. First, you have to use one dice to build a grape. And so if you roll a six, you can use one dice to circle that and you can only build the grape one time and you can only use it one time. And so you build a grape one time with a six and then later in the game, after you have a grape built for six, if you've got a four, you can combine your dice with one or multiple grapes that are unused to fill up one of the slushy cups. Once you've filled up the slushy cup by getting the exact total, you mark it in and you get two stars, two stars per slushy. So we're gonna go ahead and start round three here. And here we go. All right, five and a three. So five and a three. So what I'm gonna try and do here, I'm gonna mark off the three over here in sailing 
I'm going to record that I earned a heart. I'm going to write the number five on that crate. Now, I'm not using the five there. I'm just marking what it was. I'm going to use the five over here in canoeing. I'm going to fill up that one there, and that earns a coin. So I earned a heart and a coin off of that one roll. And I mark down my die roll here. All right, here we go. Four and a two. Four and a two. All right, I'm going to mark off the two in kayaking on the heart side. I can earn another heart. And then I'm going to mark off the four in canoeing for the grape, which also earns me another heart. And if you remember, three hearts is enough to get me at least one star in kayaking. So I decided I'm going to focus on the hearts first and then hopefully fill in with pumpkins if the dice um, work out where that's a, a good strategy. All right. My third roll here is coming. A one and a four. So one and a four. All right, so I'm going to mark off the four in kayaking and another heart. And I'm going to circle the one in canoeing and take a pumpkin. So I've got a few grapes here built. Hopefully, I can roll something higher here and start building some of the. Uh, building some of the slushies out. All right, roll number four. Four to five. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to mark off this other four in sailing. Take another heart. And I'm going to write the number five down on this crate. Oh, and I forgot to write down the dice roll here. So now I've got at least two crates with a five. So in another roll, if I roll a five, I can mark both of those off and earn two stars. I'm hoping that I'm gonna roll another five.
Uh, I don't know if I was muted there. Um, hopefully everybody can hear that. Uh, feel free to take the link up here in the, um, in the top of the description, the troop2319.com scouting realms and post the, and uh, use the score sheet and the videos to help your own troop or patrol or pack play this game or crew. Um, we hope everybody had a good time and look at this as a really cool game that you can play in a remote setting. Um, like I said, we're hoping we're, you know, we like playing this even um, just here in person at the house. And so hopefully uh, everyone here had a good time. So thank you very much for sticking around and playing. Um, and that's it. I'm going to go ahead and stop the live feed. Uh, but thanks and have a good time at the rest of the great backyard camp out going on today.